what what was so conducive for those deer to bed in that exact spot? Like what what do you feel like was like made them want to bed there? Shade, okay. Shade. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's, that's, you know, I'm hunting pretty open country and that's shades always, almost always their, their number one concern. Gotcha. So, and yeah, and in the, early season, it's their, one of their number one concerns. Now later in the year as you know, as it cools off, you'll, I mean, it, it's still, you know, the shade gives them some cover and some protection. Um, but yeah, it's, it's shade. And like, yeah. Okay. So when you say shade, is that, is that typically like a rock that might have an overhang on it that gives them a little bit of shade? Is it bushes? Like what, what kind yeah, of stuff? Rocks, looking for there? bushes, blown down trees. I've seen them bed under the root ball of like a blown down tree. Um, just whatever provides them shade. I mean, whether it's, it could just be a, you know, on the backside of a hill where it's, you know, the sun rising and it's, it's not going to hit them until, you know, 11 or 12 o'clock, they'll, they'll just bed there wherever they can get some shade. Yeah. And when, when you're looking at those types of places that are really open like that is I struggle in those areas as far as like, okay, everything looks open. Like where do I start looking like for the, for the deer? And I remember talking to Robbie Denning and he was telling me, it's like any sort of cover and covers relative toward those types of areas. He's like, just, yes, yeah. And so I kind of want to hear your thoughts on that. You know, my son's first hunt's a great example of that. Um, his first deer hunt, we knew uh, I had been up in a neighboring unit and I, I learned just a little bit about the area and knew that if there was, I mean, it was wide open sage country, wide open sage country. Um, and I mean, you know, there were pine covered hillsides up above, but there was a giant, giant basin out there that, that you could hunt. And I mean, when I say giant basin, I mean, it's like, 30 miles across, you know, um, and there's, there's trees and stuff in there, but it's not the big high country stuff. The high country was just the mud, the roads were just total mud holes. And I'm like, I, I don't even want to screw around with that right now. I don't feel like chaining up and going up there and, you know, yeah. getting stuck for a day or two. But so we, we hunted that lower elevation down in the sage, but that sage had pockets of aspens or it had pockets of just buck brush and stuff. And that was, that was what we really honed in on and focused on those. And he killed a couple bucks up there over the years. And every time it, it had to do with that, like Robbie Denning said, and, Hey, when Robbie talks, you should probably listen close. Yeah. He's, he, he's literally written books about mule deer hunting. And I've and read them. You don't <laughs> own the books, buy them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's that, that little micro topography and micro cover, it, it means everything to them, man. I mean, you will see bucks bed out in the wide open sage, but even then it's going to be like a, a, a bed that's dug out so that they can get just a little bit lower and, and find just a little bit of shade. And I, I mean, that, that open country, that's, that's where I thrive. That's where I do my best work is, you know, I can glass it like crazy and I can, I, 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 I feel that's my great, one of my greatest strengths as a hunter is yeah. my ability to glass, um, with, with the second being my ability to, to just make the shot, you know, and that's something that I work on. I work on that year round. I mean, I don't, you know, some kid, um, a guy posted on uh, Instagram yesterday he goes, Hey, does anybody have their bows back out yet? Like, I said, what you can put them away <laughs> like why would you put your bow away come on yeah. i i love shooting my bow that's that thing brings me a lot of joy and yeah a, a great deal of stress relief throughout the year you know so yeah i, I don't so that's that but my my shooting I, I told you you know i used to shoot a lot of tournaments and i don't shoot a lot of tournaments anymore but every shot i make now you know, when I go to an archery range, I go to a 3D range, especially every shot I take, I take that shot as if I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to kill that mule deer, getting ready to kill that elk, getting ready to kill that red stag, which I'm never going to kill a red stag. But, you know, it, it just takes that level of preparation and focus. And then when you get to um, like the buck I shot in 2021, this it was so cool. I. I, um, that, that wide buck that my, my son shot that I was telling you about when he was 15, 
I had actually been at full draw on that buck three times in one morning and I just couldn't get the shot. I needed. I couldn't get the angle. I, he was through the brush too fast, you know, through the opening too fast or, you know, a number of things, but I just couldn't get the shot I needed on him. So I sat there and watched that buck and I, I was, I was frustrated, but I knew there was another group of deer that I glassed from the other side of the basin that early that morning. And I'm like, if I get back up over, over this ridge, I think I'm, my morning's not over. So I got up there and I peeked over the top of the ridge and, oh my gosh, there's five more bucks that, you know, that are feeding down there. And one of them, one of them, I saw a cheater on the outside and I'm like, oh, that's dangerous. You don't want to show me a cheater. I like those two bucks. <laughs> so as, I, as I'm looking at that cheater, he turned his head a little bit and I saw a cheater on the inside of his rack. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, Hey, I'm, but a man, I can't, <laughs> I can't pass this, you know? So anyway, I, I looked down at him and, and I'm like, all right, he was, he was faced straight away from me. I'm like, all right, no shot, no shot, no shot. And I just sat there and watched him feed for, for a couple minutes. And finally he turned and gave me like almost, almost a straight broadside shot. I could see the, the top, like two thirds of his body above the brush. And I'm like, you know what? This, this just all seems so familiar to me. And I'm like, you know, I've hunted this spot before and I've shot a buck or two there, but, but I, this, this scenario, this setup just seems so familiar to me. And I, I pulled up my rangefinder, and clicked it 71 yards. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is almost the exact shot that we have at the Highlands Ranch 3D range. And on a mule deer in oak brush, I mean, I'm like, this is this, I have practiced this shot 300 times this year alone. So I drew back and oh my gosh, I was so confident in that shot drew back pin settled shot broke and as soon as that shot broke i'm like oh he's not gonna like that <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough he did not and uh it, but he you know he went like 50 60 yards and rolled down the hill dead so but it was you know it was that that the fact that i had practiced that shot so many times and I knew exactly what it was going to take for me to make that shot. And it, it was just, it was just really cool. I, I, you know, I've never had a scenario that was that tailor-made, you know, from, from drawn from my own experiences, but, but yeah, it was pretty cool, you know, so just staying focused on the, at the 3d range and preparing yourself 